When given a polynomial function, we want to be able to look at it, be able to make some predictions about the general shape that it's going to take, but then also once we graph it, there are some features that we can interpret uh, via just looking at the graph, but then also using that graph to try to draw more accurate conclusions. And so that's what we're going to be working on here. So to start off with, when we're given a polynomial function, as we'll see below, we want to first generate some expectations as to what that graph should look like using our leading coefficient test. So this is basically determining whether it's going to be a touchdown or a disco graph. Are the two sides going to be both up or both down in the case of a touchdown graph? Or which side is going to be up and which side is going to be down in the case of a disco graph? So we want to at least be able to make some sort of predictions as to what that's going to look like. Then we're going to graph using either a graphing calculator or we can use Desmos. And so Desmos is a nice tool for being able to quickly generate graphs of functions. But Desmos has some uh, limited capacity in that uh, we can find integer zeros pretty easily, but any zeros that are not integers are going to be pretty difficult for us to find exact values for. Um, or complex zeros, as we'll see in our next lesson, don't show up at all. So we have to be able to use this graph to be able to help us find the zeros that are either irrational, that have square roots in them, or are imaginary. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the graph that we generate find the zeros that are integer values, and then we're going to use synthetic division to help reduce our higher order polynomial function down to a quadratic, so down to where the highest exponent is only x squared. And then we'll use the same quadratic techniques that we've worked on previously to find what those remaining zeros are. It's a pretty complicated and involved process, but we'll get through it together. So the first thing we want to do is use our leading coefficient test to develop some expectation about the, what the general shape of the graph will look like. And so that leading coefficient test tells us that this graph is going to be a disco graph because we have an odd highest exponent. And then we also know because the leading coefficient is a positive one that we're going to be up on the right hand side because if we plug in larger and larger positive values for x, we're going to get a positive result, whereas we're going to be down on the left-hand side of the graph because the farther and farther to the left we go, the bigger the negative we plug in, we're going to get negative outputs out of that highest exponent term. So generally speaking, we're going to have a shape of a graph that looks like this. Now where it crosses through the x-axis, how many times it crosses through the x-axis, does it bounce off of the x-axis, we can use Desmos to help us with that and then the synthetic division and quadratic solving techniques to continue from there. So at this point we want to go to Desmos and we want to graph this polynomial function. So we can either enter f of x equals and then enter our function uh, or we can put y equals, it doesn't really matter. But in the end we want to graph it and I want you to do that either on your uh, app on your phone or via uh, the uh, computer uh, by going to the website and then we can generate the graph. And So then once we generate the graph we can zoom in uh, to the part that we're most interested in which is where everything is happening along the x-axis because we want to find what the zeros are. And the way we're going to do that is by just clicking with either our finger or our mouse on these key locations here. So we can see if we click on that left hand point the graph goes through the point negative 3 comma 0. So we have an integer value of a 0 here. But then we have these two other locations that are definitely not integers. We have some sort of decimal value, which indicates that those are irrational, meaning they are going to involve some sort of square root. We don't want to just put negative 1.414. We want to be more precise than that. We want to find the exact value of the root. So I'm going to take this information here and I'm going to sketch it on my coordinate plane. Now we can scale our graph however is most convenient. If you look at our graph here, we're going from 10 to negative 10 in the vertical direction, but then we're only going from negative 6 to 6 in the horizontal direction. So back on my main page, I'm going to sketch the graph using the information that I have here. I'm going to stay counting by ones in the horizontal direction and ones in the vertical direction because I'll still be able to fit these key locations. In future examples, 
we'll see that that won't be the case. So I can see that this point right here is at approximately kind of two and a half ish, and then it looks like it's up about two and a half ish. So I'm going to plot that point there on my graph. I also want to get the y-intercept here is negative six. We can see that. So I just want to get a ballpark sketch of my graph. So I'm going to go back here. And so the zeros that we had were at negative three. So I'm going to put that spot on my graph. Negative 1.4 was another. And then positive 1.4. So I'm just estimating those locations. And then if you'll recall, it was negative two and a half ish up two and a half ish. So that's going to be somewhere right around there. And then I had that uh, zero negative six was my y intercept. So if I go down to negative six, I've got a point there. So that's enough for me to be able to get a reasonable sketch of my graph. And we should label what we're counting by in each direction. So we're going from negative 10 to 10 in the vertical and horizontal direction. So each unit, each box in my grid counts as one unit. In other graphs, we'll have to count by twos or by fives. And so we'll have to make sure, we always need to make sure that we label our graph accordingly. But the key point that we're going to take advantage of now is this one right here. So the zero at this location was x equals negative 3. Recall that these other two locations were negative and positive 1.414. So we want to find what those exact locations are by using this one here. And so this is where we get to step three in the list of uh, steps that we highlighted earlier. Step one was to determine whether it's touchdown or disco, which side's up, which side's down. Step two was to graph it and to find any integer zeros like the one that we have here. So step three now is to set up some synthetic division because right now our polynomial is a cubic. We want to knock it down to a quadratic. So the highest exponent is x squared so that we can find these other two zeros here, the exact values, not just the decimal values. So we're going to use synthetic division. I'm going to take negative 3, my integer 0, and I'm going to put that out there. And then I'm going to use the coefficient of my polynomial on the inside here. So 1, and then we just need to be careful here. I overwrote it there, but that is a positive 3. And then we've got negative 2, and then negative 6. So now I roll through my synthetic division. If you recall, in the vertical direction we add, and that first number always just gets brought down. And so now on the diagonals, we multiply. So negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. So then in the vertical direction, we're going to add. 3 plus negative 3 is 0. Now we multiply again. Negative 3 times 0 is 0. And then we add in the vertical direction. So that's negative 2. Multiply again. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. Add one last time, and we get 0, so that's our remainder. So indeed, we confirm negative 3 divided evenly, got a remainder of 0, so that's correct. So what this does for us, if you recall, this is the coefficient in front of x cubed, so this is the coefficient in front of x squared. So now my equation that's left after I've divided out that negative 3 is x squared plus 0x, and then minus 2 equals 0. So now this is an equation I can solve, and when I solve this equation, it will give me these two zeros, but I'll get exact values for them instead of these decimal values. So I don't need to factor anything. I can just solve using square roots. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So I isolate my x squared, so x squared equals 2. So now I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and so then square root of x squared is just x equals, and then I'm just going to put plus or minus. Remember, we always need a plus or minus when we take the square root of both sides, and then I'm just going to leave it as the square root of 2. So all together, all of our zeros, we've got negative 3, which we observed from the graph, and then the other two that we observed, but now we have exact values for them, plus and minus root 2. So to review, we first generated an expectation as to what our graph should look like using that leading coefficient test. So because of the odd highest exponent, we knew it was disco. Because of the positive coefficient, we knew it would be up on the right and down on the left. Then we graphed using Desmos, and we sketched our graph here, interpreting what we got from the computer or from the app. 
then labeling our axes carefully to make sure that we know what we're counting by and then plotting some key points carefully to make sure we have an accurate sketch. Then we used the integer zero that we could observe using Desmos by just clicking on that uh, spot right there. Got negative three, but we found that the other two zeros were these 1.414 values. So we knew that we had some sort of irrational zero, so we had to figure out a way to solve for that. And so the way we did that is we used our synthetic division with the integer zero that we had, and so that gave us a quadratic that we could then use to solve to find what those remaining irrational zeros were.